Hi and welcome to this DCP Web Blender 2.8 beginners tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to aim to create something similar to this. So basically we've got this camera focus at the beginning so you can see it's a bit blurred out you can see over here it's quite blurry and as the camera moves it will focus onto these objects you've got these particles and then we've got this fluid simulation here we've got these like mountain ridges or whatever you want to call them and as we scrub across it kind of looks like an alien sort of scene so i made this text called alien and it pops out from this fluid moving up like this so we're going to make something similar to this let's try to do something better so let's close down this image here and we'll open up blender and then we'll click on general like usual here general and we'll go to file save as and on my desktop i've got the folder i'm going to call this uh let's call this um alien text zero one okay so we've got the cube we're going to middle mouse click and rotate around so we see the x-axis this way and the y-axis going forwards like this we'll click on the cube and delete it first so just hit the delete key we're going to press shift a and insert a plane so we've got this plane object and we want to scale this so on the let's see on the x-axis we want to scale it by 30 so let's zoom out a little bit so we can see it on the x-axis 30 and then on the y-axis we want to scale it by 240 so we've got this wide long plane now if we zoom right out you can see what it looks like something like this right in fact we might make it a little bit longer let's make it 300 so i'm going to set it to 30 and 300 and i'm going to leave the z it z um the height at one basically yeah so we press number seven and this is going to be a little bit similar to a previous tutorial i did where we did this fly through with the camera but we're going to use a different material and different lighting and it's going to look pretty different at the end we're going to create a, another section here where our camera is going to fly into and we do some stuff right we do some good stuff so first of all we need to go into edit mode here and then we want to go to edge and subdivide here so we're going to do it once twice three times four times five and then finally six so we subdivided six times using the edge subdivide here six times right so you should see something like this and then we're going to press the letter a twice so when you tap A twice, it unselects everything. When you press the letter A once, it will select everything. A twice will unselect everything. And we're going to click here and go to enable. This is for proportional editing. And then in this one, we're going to set it to random. So all we're going to do is, um, what we want to do is at the, at the top edge here, we don't want to select anything at the back. So let me zoom in a little bit so it's a bit easier for you to see. So at the top edge here, um, we want to click uh, we want to click on these little vertices but we want to hold down the shift key at the same time right so we want to click them around here like this but we want to leave a gap here so make sure there's like a gap here at the top um, and then we just want to randomly select down here so just randomly select from both sides and try and make it a bit random if i zoom out you'll probably be able to see it a bit clearer right let's press number so number seven yeah if you pan by accident like this just press number seven to get to top view and then we're just going to randomly select and try and leave a path down the middle so don't select too close to the the center point here and just randomly select down here we'll do this a little bit quick right So something like this then we're just going to middle mouse click and rotate around at an angle so we can see it at this sort of angle here it doesn't really matter what angle but you want to see it at some sort of angle yeah like this then we're going to press the letter G to grab so G will grab these these vertices G and then this is a little bit hard to see right but can you see this can you see this circle expanding and shrinking so I'm using my mouse wheel to expand and shrink this and really what I'm going to do is actually press escape so I'm going to hit the escape key I'm going to undo like unselect everything or undo that action so I want to rotate it really around at this sort of angle here so I want to zoom in sort of like here as if we were flying across this scene now we can press the letter G and you can see this white circle here right 
So press G then Z and Z will uh, lock it to the vertical axis and then you can use your mouse wheel to rotate in and out to give these ridges um, more dimension or less dimension, right? more complexity. You can see as you rotate it to smaller, they're going to be less complex. It's going to be like these, these spires or whatever you want to call them. But if we rotate our mass wheel downwards, the circle grows. And as that circle grows, these objects get more complex, right? So we want something like this. You can see roughly how big that white circle is. And if we were to pull down and it'll go into the ground, we want to pull them up to around here. So once I've got my setting like this, yours might be different. It will probably be different, but just get it roughly like this and then left click to confirm. So now you can actually see what's going on. We've got like this path to fly through. And then uh, let's um, go back into edit mode here. Sorry, object mode. And now we can see our sort of camera is going to fly through this scene, right? So let's move all the way down to this. Uh, let's press number seven, actually. Press number seven, hold down the shift key in the middle mouse button. Now we're at the top edge, right? So our camera is going to start down here and fly through this. And it's going to get to this section over here at the back. So what we want to do is use the cursor, 3D cursor here, click it and then click in the center here. So like imagine this box here, you want to be clicking in the center point here, roughly the center. It doesn't have to be bang on accurate, but close to the center here. Then press Shift A and add another plane. So the plane is very small, so we're just going to press um, S to scale and then hold down the Shift key and press Z. So Shift and Z. And that will scale it on proportion with the X and Y only. So now we can scale this out. So we just drag our mouse to scale it out. And we'll scale it out so that it's roughly, let's see, this sort of size should be good, yeah? So it's roughly 100 by 100. You can see here, 100 by 100. So let's just type in 100 by 100 here. Um, now, what we want to do is press the letter N on our keyboard, the letter N, and then we want to lock the camera to this plane here. So it's the second plane, this one, right? We want to lock the camera to this. And now when we rotate, we're going to rotate around this object like this. So we can see this object specifically. So a smart thing for us to do is open up this. Let's press Control S to save. This is the main plane. So let's call this, um, let's call this, uh, Ground start. So I'm calling this one ground start, and the one behind it, I'm going to call it ground end. Ground end. So we've got a start and end. Now, what we want to do is um, press number seven on our keyboard so we see it from the top view. Then we'll go into the edit mode again, and we're going to subdivide this as well. So We'll go to the edge, subdivide once, twice. If you click outside by accident, press the letter A to select everything, right? Edge, and then subdivide again. So that's three, I think. Four, five, and then finally six. Six should be good. I think this will be okay. Um, in fact, let's do seven. So we do seven, yeah? So then press the letter A twice. That will unselect everything and again we're going to select vertices from here so start let's think about this right so we want to select around here hold down the shift key let me zoom out a little bit you're about to see the vertices so we want to select around here like this you want them to be a little bit closer than what you did before Don't select anything here. You want to leave this empty, right? Because that's where our camera is going to fly through into the scene. And maybe you can randomly just select a few here as well, like inside, but not too close to the center, like this. Then we're going to left, we're going to middle mouse click and pan around, and we're going to zoom in a little bit, and we're going to uh, press the letter G and then Z again, and we're going to grow these ones out as well, like this. And you can use your mouse wheel to make them more complex or less complex. I don't really want them to be too much like something like this. 
and then I'll left click and then if we press number seven again you can see the sort of shapes that we're going to get so if we were to middle mouse click and scrub down here and then go to object mode again you can imagine our camera is going to fly through here and it's going to fly into this area here where we're going to do our text animation or whatever we're going to do okay so let's um let's move back here and we want to move to the very end or the what we can consider to be the beginning right here yeah so let's just try and imagine where our camera is going to be so our camera is going to start somewhere here so we position our uh, viewport to somewhere like here then press Control, alt and zero and that should put the camera in this position let's just see what's going on here so camera click here and close it uh, where is it lock camera Lock. that's local camera lock camera click here to close that and then let's see why we can't see anything at the moment what's going on here let's try and zoom here control or zero okay now we can see so let's save this and we'll click on the camera here and on the y-axis let's bring it back so we move the camera backwards and then Z bring it down and we probably want to move it to the side a little bit here this is roughly where we want to start right so if we zoom in you can imagine that's roughly what the camera is going to see we're probably going to bring it a bit forward so around here so we can see the full frame is filled um, then if we click on the camera and then click on the camera object data the end here the end clipping we will increase that so we want to set that to around 400 let's set it to 400 and we can adjust this layer we we'll set it to 400 for now and then the focal length let's bring that out to around 34 millimeter I think will be good and then we just need to bring the camera forward a bit more again so that can be our start frame if we press uh, N on our keyboard that will close down this little widget on the side this transformer we'll save this and then press F12 and then we can see roughly what we're going to see on our very first start frame so it will look something like this obviously it doesn't look amazing we're going to fix that in a minute so what we'll do um, let's have a think about this so first thing we'll do uh, let's see let's click on this land this ground here ground start we'll select that and it will go to the material and we'll click new material then we will go to the trans yeah the transmission here and let's set it to one and then set the roughness right down set it to like 0 0.1 for now and we'll see what happens let's go into render view so we're going to render view for now let's save this then go into the world settings and we need to download a file so let's have a look here uh, we're going to download a few files and then we'll see which one works best right so let's open up our folder inside this folder let's create a folder called hdri so we just create a folder called HDRI and go into that folder. We'll go to the browser and we'll type in HDRI, HDRI Haven. So I'll make a link to this and I'll save that in the YouTube description. Let me just make a quick note. So I'll put that website link in the H in the uh, YouTube description. We'll scroll down here and click on browse all, and then we're going to go to the nighttime and we'll download this Shanghai one first so click on it and then click download the 4k and then we'll go back and back again and we'll pick a few different ones so let's pick this one fireplace we'll click that and then download 4k and then we'll pick one other one let's say something like this one it's got this bit lighter in color we'll click that and then download that one as well so we've got three of them We'll drag this to the side for a second and then in this folder we'll open up this HDRI folder and we'll drag them into here okay so we've got all three in here we'll close actually we'll minimize this because we might come back and look for some other ones let's open up blender let's go to the shading here shading 
and then we want to go to the world settings here and then select use nodes and then we'll go to the world setting here and let's click on uh, render view here so if we move our mouse cursor here and press zero that will show us what the camera sees right and right now what we want to do is click on this green background and delete it I'll zoom in here a little bit and we're going to press shift A and we're going to insert a texture environmental texture here we'll also insert a uh, texture coordinate here and then finally we're going to insert a let's see um, mapping here so we've got texture coordinate which will the generated will link to the vector here this vector will link to this vector here let's do that again it's a bit too close here and then the color will link to the surface here then we're going to click open go to the HDR map and we'll click this flat fireplace one first then click open now we can see um, our material get illuminated right so what we'll do now let's see um, let's press F12 so you kind of get an idea of what this floor is going to look like and we're going to play around with the settings to improve what this looks like in a moment so let's just go over to the render settings here and then tick bloom and we'll adjust this a little bit later and we also want to tick off screen space reflections here here and inside of here we want to turn off half res trace turn that off and refractions i'm going to show you what that does in a moment so we're going to almost create like a glass material here and i'll show you whether we were going to use refractions or not we'll see afterwards okay so the reason why we set up the uh the map like this this uh texture because on this z-axis we can actually rotate so really what's happening here if i if i press um zero and zoom out so we can see our object in this hdri lighting right with this z here we can rotate the actual map itself right it's a bit hard to see but you know as we're rotating this we can get different colors so look, imagine if we get closer to this light we're going to get these light effects so if we press zero and zoom in we can then rotate and pick what sort of lighting we want um, so this is how we can manipulate the hdri map to position exactly where we want and then we can get different types of lighting and we can actually move this we can actually animate this uh, hdr map in our animation sequence to change the lighting as we're flying through this scene so let's set this back to zero for a minute the z-axis and you can rotate it on the y you can rotate it on the uh, on the x and the y as well so you can do a lot of stuff with this we'll open this and we'll go to um, this one here and open it we can see our lighting is completely different now. Now it's got like this silvery sort of blue color, right? And we open this and go to the Shanghai one. And open. Uh, let's open that one. Now you can see our lighting is quite different. So we can experiment with this. We can pick a nice set of colors. Like that looks pretty good, right? You've got this purple and all this sort of colors going through. We want this like alien sort of style thing, right, going on. So we'll experiment with this and see um, what works well for us okay so what what we'll do next is uh go to file save and then go back to layout and what we want to do is almost create like a tube around this content it's a little tricky to explain so let's um press number seven on our keyboard so we press number seven really what we should do is click on um let's go to let's click this tool here right we'll click on this um what do, what do we call it ground end so let's click on ground end and go to the material so when you click on material here and you don't see anything here move your mouse up and down then it will appear sometimes i think it'll bug or something you have to click on this and then roll your mouse wheel up and down and then you'll see this here and then click um material one so both of these should have the same material now both of those objects uh, where they're gone 
here it is. Yeah, so they'll be looking the same. And really what I want to do is kind of like create a, a tube around this content. We could even create a sphere if we want. Um, let's try a sphere first and see how that works. So really what we want to do is move our 3D cursor to the center point here. So we just click here and then click around here. So you're on the X and the Y, the center point. Then we can click back on the select tool, press shift A, and we'll insert a UV sphere. And then we're gonna press S to scale, and we're gonna scale it out so that it's wider. It'll be wider. Let's press number seven. We want it to be wider than this object here, right? Probably need to scale it out a bit more, to something like this. Then let's zoom out a bit more and we'll use the move tool to move it so that it's more, more between the center here. And then we want to scale it on the Y axis. So press S then Y and scale it out so that it's surrounding all of the content, right? If you can go into wireframe, you see your content in the background here. In fact, what we could do is go into solid view here and then go to overlays Let's have a look here, how do we do this? Um, I'll go to shading here and then click random. Nah, that doesn't, that doesn't work actually. And click here, show scene, show scene transparent. Yeah? So when we go into solid view here, in the shading we can say, give all of our objects a random color. First of all, uh, if you do single color, they'll all be the same, right? So we do random so we can see the objects inside of here randomly. And these, these are not the real colors. These are just for us to see. And then we can click here to show transparent. Then we can make everything see-through almost like. And then we can see our content inside of here. And we can make sure that this sphere is covering all of the content, right? Something like this. Then we can go back to our render view. Press zero. And we can see this like tunnels sort of being formed around it, but we need to extend that and we're going to extend it by going to the camera and extending the view until it closes right at the end. So this set to like about 1000 and uh, needs a bit more than that. So let's set it to 1200 that should surround this whole object. Now we can click on the sphere here. So we'll click on this sphere. And we'll go to object and uh, where is it? Shade smooth. So now it's nice and smooth. So that gets rid of the HDR background. If we press F12, we won't see the HDR background anymore. All we'll see is the light reflecting off of this surface. So what we'll do is click on the sphere and go to its material and create a new material. And with that material, we want to set it to black. Or you can choose any color you want. Um, it doesn't have to be black. Then the roughness, we can bring that down a bit. Let's see, something like this. And that's really for you to experiment what sort of lighting or how that's going to work. We don't need no transmission here. Something like this, press F12. And we get these nice colors in the background and we've got our object and we're going to fly through this you can see all the reflections and stuff right now, there's a kind of an option here let's try it out anyway so what we'll do is um we'll go to the so we'll go to the ground start here click on it and then down here we can do screen space reflections turn that on and then on the roughness, if we bring that down, then go to, let's see, let's go to um, the render settings here and open this. If we turn on refractions, really what we can do now is make these, this ob these objects um, see-through. So you can actually see through them. It's a bit hard to see here. Let's have a look. Um, press zero so when we turn this off you 
you kind of lose all the reflections off the floor. I haven't quite figured this out. I'm still, you know, learning Blender. But let's click on this 3D cursor and click here. And just as an example, let's add a UV sphere. And let's just press S to scale it. And then we'll press G to grab it. You don't really need to do this. I just want to try something. So if we move this object, uh, let's have it behind this object here. In theory, we should be able to click, click on ground start and go to its material. Let's see. We should be able to make this... Kind of see through. Let's undo this. I'm not really seeing through this. Um, I think what we have to do is turn on refractions here. We have to turn on refractions, yeah? So on the ground start here when we go to its material we turn the transmission all the way up we turn the roughness down all the way then down here you can turn on screen space refractions and tick it then actually what's happening here is this content these mountains or whatever you want to call them they're actually see-through now so if i were to click on this sphere behind it let's use the select tool click on the sphere behind it then go to the it's this sphere here let's go to its material let's create a material for it and change that to a different color you can see that although this object is solid in front of it it's actually behaving like glass now and it's it's refracting the light right coming through so i'm kind of 50 50 whether i want that or not because one thing I found, and I'm not sure if there's a bug in Blender or I'm doing something wrong, I'm not quite sure yet, I haven't worked it out. But if I go back to the render view and then turn off refractions, um, I, when I turn off refractions, I get the reflections down here. When I turn refractions on, I, I kind of lose those reflections off of these objects. So it's kind of like a one or the other sort of scenario so for me i kind of want the reflections down here so to get them back what i'm going to do is right click and delete this and then i'm going to go back to the ground here and i'm going to turn off the screen space reflections here so i get the reflection or the screen space refraction so i get the reflections on the floor here that's kind of like what i like uh, let's zoom out a little bit we want to bring this camera down so let's click on the camera let's um, move it down towards the floor and we want to rotate it forwards and bring it down let's rotate it forward uh, this y-axis we can set to zero let's bring it down more so let's have a look we need to bring it forward a bit right so let's move it oh, let's not that one move it forward and let's bring it down I kind of want it to be like here right then click on the ground here and we're going to adjust the roughness of this to something like this like 0 0.164 is exactly what I've done so you get the reflections off of here you can click on this overlay here and that kind of gets rid of all the bordering and the selection so you can just see roughly what it looks like you can press f12 and then you get an idea of what this landscape is going to look like when we fly through it so i think that's going to look pretty good and then at the end when we get to that that square space that we built at the end we're going to have some sort of fluid dynamic and then some sort of text and maybe some particle things going on so we've actually done quite a bit here if we middle mouse click and rotate we can kind of get an idea in fact what we can do is press zero and click on the camera and using this y-axis we can just scrub through and kind of get an idea like flying through this scene we're gonna to have to dodge around all these obstacles and fly around them and do all this good stuff um, but you 
kind of get an idea of what that floor is going to look like and you can rent you can move to like a point here and render it you kind of get an idea of what that scene is going to look like i think it's going to look pretty cool so what we can do is just move this z back or this y let's move the camera back to the beginning uh, let's see where's the beginning it's not that far and then our camera is going to kind of fly through this direction here and fly around this obstacle and maybe fly over something okay so i think that's going to be the first part of this tutorial done that's the beginning part we've set up our content what you can do if you want is just go into the shading here and you should still be on your um texture your world texture here your hdr and you can rotate this around and try and find a nice set of colors that you like and we can actually animate this right so as we're flying through this scene we can actually move this slightly um and get like some nice colors going we'll experiment with that in the next video and we'll try and get our our final scene set up with the camera so that's the end of part one join me in part two where we'll fly through this camera we'll get it to the end uh where the um where we put that square object right this square scene here so we'll fly through all of this um and then we'll get to the final part and then we'll do our fluid dynamics and maybe some text or something will pop out here and then i think we're about done and we'll do some particles and we'll render this out and see what the video looks like so join me in part two where we look to continue this tutorial so let's go to file save let's close this and i look forward to seeing you in part two